Welcome to this short video to the introduction of strategic business reporting or SBR. It is for the international stream and my name is Steve and I'm the course director at APC. I'm also a fellow member of ACCA. So as you can see on the screen I also published articles onto the ACCA's AB magazine um, on the IFRS issues, for example, the article is the IFRS 15 revenue recognition. And also, I also published a few books about IFRS. Uh, I published them in Hong Kong, and you can buy these books uh, from the bookshops in Hong Kong or from my company's website. You can even borrow it uh, from the Hong Kong's library. The first book is about the Pick Easy iAdvice, where I lay out quite a lot of iAdvice applications with lots of lots of practical examples, which will surely help with your SBI exam. On second is a particular accounting standard, iAdvice 16 leases. We've also, uh, with quite a lot of practical examples of how we apply this standard in the real business as well. This will help with your exam in the SBR. In this video, I'll be taking you through, first of all, the syllabus of the SBR, and then we're going to take you through to the exam environment, which is the computer-based exam. And third, I'll be showing you some tips of how we're going to achieve exam success in the SBR. So let's first of all have a go at the syllabus. So the syllabus has been divided into the part A up to part F. Part A is all about ethical and professional principles. This is quite important because it really depends on the theories of the, of the capital market and accounting or the IFRS will be mainly serving the investors, which means they're going to buy or sell shares or bonds. And the timing and the way that we publish that information, because it's our accountant's job, would really affect the share price of a company or a business. And that's why quite a lot of businesses, for example, they may try to overstate the expense by using the accrued expense in relation to some discretionary costs, for example, the training and advertising costs, to make the performance in the quarterly report look worse. So that they can, for example, uh, later on they can spin off their companies. So if that's the case, um, this is known as a window dressing issue. It has happened uh, in, in the real life. For example, a company in mainland China. And that's why ethical and professional principles are absolutely key. And here, when we are deciding the way that we are accounting for the transaction, and the timing that we're going to publish the information, and so on and so forth, where not we should tell uh, the information to a few selected investors to inform them in advance of buying or selling shares and so on and so forth really depends on whether we are ethical or not. We need to stick to the ethical principles including professional behaviour which means following the law, integrity, we shouldn't lie, competence and due care, we have to do accounting correctly confidentiality, we shouldn't tell the third party of any confidential, info, confidential information uh, unless it is allowed by the business. And finally, objectivity, we shouldn't allow any conflict of interest to distort uh, our decision. So that's the part A. It really underpins the other area of the syllabus. For example, the part boy, 
we're going to be focusing on the framework again. For example, the conceptual framework. But at this level, we'll be looking at things at a higher level compared to your previous studies. For example, the financial accounting or financial reporting. And the examiner is not particularly interested in asking you again, well, what the ISB does, what the IFRS Interpretation Committee does, or give me the asset definition, uh, give me the liability definition, and so on and so forth. I don't believe the examiner at this level will be interested in asking you about that. But perhaps the examiner will give you uh, a requirement. For example, you're going to discuss about the deferred tax liability. And if this is the case, you are expected to show your accounting treatment why the deferred tax liability will be accounted for in this way. For example, in relation to the PPE revaluation, we simply debit the PPE cost account. At the same time, we're going to credit revaluation reserve or OCI or the comprehensive income. And at the same time, there will be deferred tax adjustments that we have to make. So here, instead of debiting the income tax expense, we debit the OCI and credit the deferred tax liability to move it up. And the way that we are not uh, debiting the income tax expense is because the revaluation of the tax effect or the accounting tax effect is in relation to the revaluation of the PPE. And that's why to match the expenses, because the revaluation has been put into revaluation reserve when the PPE is revalued, and then we should, for a tax effect, we debit the OCI to match them. At the same time, we'll be expected to discuss about the deferred tax uh, principles, uh, the framework requirements, for example, whether the deferred tax liability really meet the definition of a liability. Well, perhaps the answer is no, because the liability definition is the present obligation. But if you look at deferred tax liability, it is the transaction taking place now, but we are considering the future tax effect into today. It is not a present obligation, it's the future obligation. And that's why it's not meeting the definition of a liability at all. But showing the deferred tax liability would really improve the relevance of the business when, making, when investors are making their decisions. Because if they see the transaction taking place today, they would be forward-looking into the future of what it looks like. And that's why we consider the future prospect into today will help those investors uh, when they are buying or selling their shares. So these are required by the examiner, or these are the uh, questions, the style of questions that you are expected to see in the SBI exam. So, we're going to move on to the part C. We're going to report financial performance of a range of entities. But the key is not a range of entities. The key is for those public listed companies. And here we'll be going through quite a lot of accounting standard. For example, I'm going to show you the examinable document. As you can see, quite a few accounting standards that we've studied in the financial reporting paper. For example, uh, the ICE 1 presentation of financial statements. For example, the ICE 2 inventories. But so, as far as I'm concerned, that the inventories standard may be tested in combination with the group's uh, consolidation question. The example may test you uh, about the lower of cost and net realizable value. At the same time, 
in relation to the deferred tax adjustment, or perhaps the inventory has been tested in combination with the ICE 20 government grant. So, an exam standard question may involve the government gives you a free of charge certificate so it can sell it to other parties. But how are you going to determine that value? Either you're going to use the nominal value, which is $1, set by the IS-20, or required by the IS-20, or perhaps you're going to determine the fair value of those certificates involving an independent expert providing a value to those certificates so it can bring them onto your account as inventories. It really depends on the entity's choice. So, what you have to do is to really cover those accounting standards step by step. From my perspective, the key to pass the SBR, of course, you have to practice quite a lot of exam standard questions, but at the same time, but before that, you really have to improve the accounting standards knowledge. And in our course, I'll be going through each of the accounting standards in much more detail with combination with the past examination questions to better equip you to uh, win in this particular paper. And then moving on to the part doc is the group of entities you are required to prepare the group statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income the group statement of financial position, group statement of changes in equity, and group statement of cash flows. What do I mean by group? Is where we involve the adjustment for goodwill, associates, and joint ventures, and even the NCI, or non-controlling interests, in addition to the single entities account. And then, we're going to move on to part E, Interpreting financial statements for different stakeholders. In particular, we'll be looking at the earnings per share interpretation. At the same time, we'll be discussing about the social and environmental aspects and even the integrated reporting principles. And finally, the impact of changes in accounting regulation as the part F, which means the current issues would be tested not in a single question, but as a small requirement uh, to, the, to the paper. The paper, total marks 100, you need to achieve at least 50 marks. There will be 195 minutes in total for the SBR. I'll be showing you how to plan our time or plan our deadline in the next video onwards. The exam will be run in a computer-based environment divided into section A and section B. And of course, in the SBR exam, the marks will be marked or be uh, provided by the marker, not by the computer. And that's why you have to wait at least one month before the exam result is released. So in the section A, there will be 50 marker question split into two scenario questions and then section B a further two questions so it will be four questions in both section A and B all together as you can see there will be two professional marks in section A and two professional marks in section B the key to pass the SBR is not to remember the name, or oh sorry, the numbers of the accounting standard. For example, you can simply say per IFI's inventories, instead of saying IS2 inventories. You can gain the full credit. But the key to pass this paper is to focus on the written part. You have to make sure that you're absolutely familiar with the accounting standards knowledge. And then, when applying your accounting standard knowledge into a set of cases or questions, make sure one mark equals to one point. If you follow that principle, 
you will surely pass this paper relatively easily. So now let's see what the exam environment looks like. For example here, I provided you with a screenshot from the SBR exam. First of all, for example, the question one is 30 marks, and then another 20 marks in another section A question perhaps. The 30 marker question has been divided into six stuff. For example, the acquisition of another company with 70% shareholdings, the acquisition of another business, another business, and so on and so forth. And then you are given the response options in terms of word processor or perhaps the Excel spreadsheet. Okay, you can choose. But then you will click on the requirement to see what the examiner is asking for. Here, the examiner has asked you about the part A, part B, and part C. My advice to you is, first of all, to copy the requirements into your word processor. Just copy and paste them into a word processor, and then break down each of the requirements. For example, in the part A, you should plan your answer in this way. Explain to the directors of the Kutchen company how goodwill should be calculated, showing the adjustment needed to correct any errors made by the finance director. And here, I would use the word exploit, or perhaps some errors that I corrected. And of course, showing your workings, usually in an Excel spreadsheet, that will really help you, because you don't have to draw a line of each, uh, of each line in your financial statements unlike in a traditional word processor. And part boy, again, is to explain how the gains or loss should have been recorded in the group financial statement. But please do remember, you are not required simply to calculate the gains or loss, but you are required to explain with suitable workings. And that's the reason why you will be expected to split the five marker question into perhaps three marks in relation to calculation, another two sentences to explain how it should be presented in your own words. Perhaps you're going to bring the, um, I don't know, the conceptual framework requirements. I'm going to show you how in our due course. At the same time, you'll be explaining the accounting treatment as well. So these would really help you score marks. So that's how we do it, okay? So very importantly, plan your answer. Don't miss any requirement. If you miss any requirement, you can't really score professional marks, can you? Because you're not professional. But if you answer all parts of the questions, trust me, two professional mark, at least you can score one. At the same time, another mark will really depend on whether you can apply accounting standards in a set of cases correctly, appropriately. And if that's the case, you can score another professional mark. So my advice to students is, first of all, to make sure that you go through the accounting standard in much more detail, rather than simply knowing a bit. But you have to go through the accounting standard in much more detail. And second, practice as many past examination questions would really help to boost your performance in the SBR exam. Finally, I'll be showing you the examples of mark allocation okay, in this particular paper. For example, in relation to the calculation, you can see 
Uh, there will be two marks, one mark, four marks, half a mark, and so on and so forth. Until it is published by the ACCA, we are not sure how many marks for each of the requirements or for each of the calculation. And you are not required to remember those. But more importantly, you need to really uh, attempt all the requirements so you can score reasonable marks. But as you can see, when we are applying the followings to the scenarios, for example, the five marker uh, calculation, for example, uh, the, the comment explanation, five marks, two marks related to the uh, calculation, and then three marks related to the comment. But sometimes the examiner may mix the comments with calculations altogether because when you're commenting on the gains or loss of disposal, uh, you need to calculate them first. But if you can't calculate them first, but you really want to earn another three marks, how can you do it? Well, my advice to you is to make up a figure. Just to make up a figure so you can earn another two out of three marks in a comment part. Okay? And so on and so forth. For example, part boy is the application of the following discussion of a definition of a liability and equity worth of two, so you're expected to write approximately four points, okay, or four simple sentences related to those liability and equity, given, giving examples as well. And also for the application as well, in relation to a calculation, at the same time, your explanation with reference to the accounting standard. Some students fail the SBR exam, although the pass rate has been consistently about 50% or more. But some students failed simply because, first of all, they're not sure they can make up a figure in the exam. And second, they're not quite familiar with the IFRS knowledge in much more detail, but they know the surface. They don't know the knowledge in much more detail. And that's why they can't really apply their knowledge into a complicated scenario. Or third, they have not practiced enough past examination questions to enable their exam success. And that's why you have to avoid those traps and make sure that you've covered the accounting standards and practice enough past examination questions with our course and I'm sure that you will find this paper interesting and easy for you to pass. That's the end of this video and um, best of luck uh, to those of you who are sitting the SBR exam in the next exam setting or in the future. I look forward to seeing you in our next video in our course We'll be going through the whole syllabus again and combining with lots of past examination questions. So that's the end of this video and bye. APC Accounting for your future.